this is the first time that the record has just been lying out in the open. The other two were different objects that got turned into the records magically. I wonder why... Let me try to be specific if you want to feel like right. Oh, of course it was you tempting the problem child to steal just so you can have an excuse to sing the Thou Shall Not Steal song. Take away someone's toys and they won't forget. If it costs stealing, you'll regret it. Think of who you hurt. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. All you have in there. Okay, putting aside the fact that he's stealing, you have to admire this kid's dedication and determination. And now he's dead. I didn't win it. You lost it, Osborne. Yeah, I think Mouse is just making up the rules as this goes along. Following the light. Have I mentioned that I don't like rap and hip hop that much? Because I don't. Also, is no one going to give the sad clown a copy of the record? A copy of the record that Mose gave to him in the first place before gifting it to Petey? Unbelievable! Ugh, he hasn't said that since three songs ago. I was just beginning to know what peace sounded like. Great! What do we do now? Do you even physics? We play follow the leader, but not if the leader falls. Ah, sure, now you tell me. Osborne, help us! I'm not going back out there! We fell helping you! And what do you want him to do exactly? The only reason you haven't fallen yet is because you're hanging on to each other. Assie! It's always nice to see you, Annie, and to meet your friends. You say that like you didn't just witness three kids falling out of the sky after a... rock slide? Earthquake? Then top ten number seven, No Adultery, is the song for you. Oh! We're actually gonna get a whole song about it. One second. Okay, I'm ready. Friends and family, man and wife, promise to be loyal and true. Then top ten number seven, No Adultery, is the song for you. So shouldn't Essie be the kingdom chum of love? My dude, you literally just got married and you're already tempted to flirt with other chicks while your wife is standing there in her wedding dress right next to you? Be loyal, be loyal to the one you love. Fine, I'll admit it. I shipped it as a kid. When strangers get to me. say how much I appreciate that they reverse the genders here? Because on stuff like this, it's usually showing the guy cheating on the girl and not the other way around. But here they show that the opposite can and does happen. Because girls can be scumbags just like boys can. That is what true gender equality is all about. Okay. Treasure the one who's by your side. Make faithfulness your guide. With how the other examples were going, I was expecting the boy bee to already have a wife when the girl bee pops out of the flower, but they didn't do that. Be loyal, be loyal, be loyal. 
none of these animals are monogamous. The sea needs more beavers, because beavers are awesome. No adultery means be loyal by not breaking promises. I mean, kind of? But you're saying that in the context of Osborne not helping you and Annie at the log like he promised. So with that in mind, no, that's not what it means. Osborne didn't commit adultery against you two. Hey, you guys, wait up for me! Man, these kids can book it! Yeah? How? This whole contest is fixed! I'm not saying he's right, but he's not wrong. You know what I want? I want to rip your head off, smart guy! Wait till I get my hands on you! Uh, sorry, Osborne, but you can't even get up this hill! Oh, yes, you can! Is... Is little Miriam encouraging Osborne's violence? It's little Miriam! So yes, you can hug! All of the other kingdom chums are the kingdom chums of blank. Like the kingdom chum of love, joy, courage, and loyalty. So why is little Miriam the yes you can cub? And why does she have an adult's voice if she is supposed to be a cub and not just a small bear? Yes, you can what? If you really want to do it and really stick to it, yes, you can do anything. I know what I want to do. Ah, kill this girl. Okay, so little Miriam is encouraging Osborne's violence. I guess that's why she's different from all the other kingdom chums. While they stand for moral and honorable things, this cub is all like, Yes, you can do anything you set your mind to, including murder. Now's the time to say I can and show you love your fellow man. Mr. Krabs, I am so confused. Never hate just for kicks. Only if you have a really good reason. Like that he's smug and annoying. Human life should be treated with respect. You know you're a sentient talking bear, right? Human life should be treated with respect. Human life is something to protect. I think a certain political party needs to hear this song. They say don't kill, now that's not very odd, since we're all created by don't God. Kill. So if someone breaks into my house and intends on being physically violent with me, am I supposed to roll over and take it because you should never kill someone? Of course not. God himself ordered people to be put to death because they were committing many human rights violations like child sacrifice and such. This is why the commandment is not Thou shalt not kill, like the King James Version says. Oops. But it's thou shalt not murder. Sometimes you have to kill someone in order to protect yourself or others. And yeah, you should never be like, Oh yay, now I have an excuse to kill someone! Yippee! Sometimes killing is necessary in order to keep yourself or others safe. That's why we have the death penalty. But murdering someone, that is, to kill someone unjustly, is never necessary. You know the creators probably knew that, and they just went with the simpler don't kill because this is a kid's movie. <coughs> Miriam wouldn't let anything happen to you. Uh, that seems a little sacrilegious. Number six! I, I got one! And you earned it by learning to quit being a little sociopath. Also, his reaction is genuinely adorable. I just want to pinch his little cheeks! Just go ahead and do it. Yes, you can. There's really nothing to it. Don't give up. Can you stick to your plan? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. Unless, of course, your plan is murder. Where are we now? I say at the home of top ten number five. Let's see if it's home. I don't think that's how that works. Oh, no. Not you, little 
little David, in your doors again! I told you he laid on the guilt-tripping thick! Now, honor your mother and your father, and that's no jive. If you want to win top ten number five. So, did Christopher and Essie adopt little David, or what? Your parents love you, they want to see you grow. They want to show you everything they know. Pay respects in the chat for all the kids watching that don't have a mom and or dad. When your dad asks you to feed the cat, Christopher and Essie own a cat. That must be awkward. When you need him, he lays out the welcome mat. That wrapping seems a little overkill because the cat never actually touched him. They wanna show you everything they know. Well, not everything. Unless, little David, you were <gasps> exaggerating? This song seemed so much longer when I was a kid. Maybe because it always gave me a guilty conscience. I need to call my parents. Yeah, well if you think I'm dropping out of this contest, you're crazy. Huh? Ah! Sure, little Miriam might not let Petey die, but little David will let you three come very close to it. one was cute. A waterfall falling upward. So much for I So much for Isaac Newton's theory of gravity. Hey! It's all about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Helpful hint you can't ignore is to keep the Sabbath. That's top ten number. What a week we had. Went to the zoo. Something tells me that Petey doesn't have his driver's license. Also, who goes to the zoo on a weekday? Again, who does this on weekdays? Starting with Monday, every day's a fun day. We love one day the best. I hope this isn't implying that the Sabbath is on a Sunday. You know the Sabbath is on Saturday, right, movie? God's special day, let's all say thank you you. As someone who loves plays and musicals, you know that a lot of Broadway plays are like the furthest away you can get from godly entertainment. Thank you for sunny afternoon. Man, as a kid, I hate hated this song and would always skip it. Of course, the happiest song with the brightest colors filled with things kids like is the one that I hated. As you can see, I've always been a killjoy. Thank you for clowns and toy balloons. Aren't most people afraid of clowns? I'm not, I just think they're lame. for not letting Petey burn us alive with that magnifying glass like it normally would have. Thank you means we think about all the good things we have all the time, but set aside one day to, well, to keep God's day special. Wow. Remember that this is the first day Osborne has heard anything about the Bible and God, and yet he gets that it doesn't matter what specific day you rest and celebrate God on. You wouldn't believe how many adults don't understand that. God, give me a break! It was a guess! I swear to God! Ah! This is crazy! I swear to... Everybody be gangster until the wind sweeps you away into a swan boat entering a tunnel of love. Why is Essie taking Osborne to a tunnel of love? He gave so much to you, the hills and roads and valleys of green. Well, 
technically it was people that built roads, technically, specifically. Oh look, now who's being a jerk? That's it! Uh, uh, take that! Take it! Uh, right there! Uh, how do you like that? Uh, uh, uh. I'm alone. The only way you can take God's name in vain. Like when Osborne did it, he never cursed. But there's also a less talked about way you can take God's name in vain. There is a larger sense in which people today take the Lord's name in vain. Those who name the name of Christ, who frame his name, and who take his name as part of their identity, but who deliberately and continually disobey his commands are taking his name in vain. Jesus Christ has been given the name above all names, at which every knee shall bow. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. And when we take the name Christian upon ourselves, we must do so with an understanding of all that it signifies. If we profess to be Christians, but act, think, and speak in a worldly or profane manner, we take his name in vain. When we misrepresent Christ, either intentionally or through ignorance of the Christian faith as proclaimed in scripture, we take the Lord's name in vain. And another example is that there was this one girl that took Jesus' words with you always and used it to say that Jesus was okay with a certain sin. And that's also taking Jesus, aka God's, name in vain. Wait, this movie never actually mentions Jesus by name, does it? Yo, what the heck kind of Christian movie is this? It doesn't even mention Jesus by name! You will not believe the anxiety of Osborne being out of the boat caused me as a kid. Bro, deep. I, I promise on a stack of Bibles. How does he know that swearing on a stack of Bibles is a thing when this is the first day that he's heard of the Bible? No, I mean I promise never to swear with God's name again. But all other types of swearing are up for grabs. The score is tied for all. But I didn't even have a chance on that one, Mose. No swearing with God's name is the lesson learned. <laughs> Another gold record has been earned. Just ignore Petey's legitimate point, why don't you? No Idols is top ten number two. Hey, look! These are the greatest rock and rollers of all time. Of course it's Moe's that says, no Idols, and then immediately puts up statues of famous people. Spider Williams! <gasps> and look! The Sizzlers! Grease Lightning Gonzo, King of the Blues! He's my hero! And... I can't believe it! Little Rattler and the Snake! And we're back to the alternate dimension theory because these are not real people or bands. Idols made of brick and stone Don't be long, long in this room. And who exactly made these stone statues, huh, Moose? Walla chicks are a real thing? Okay, if you say so. Call me a wimp, but this sequence scared me as a kid. Just the combination of the high-pitched voice, the fiery colors, and the way the statues are drawn. Ugh. It's okay to have heroes we want to be like, but when we start worshipping them, they become idols, false gods, that's wrong. Number two. You're right, Osborne. Idols are here today, gone tomorrow. So why is Osborne the one that got the record when it was Petey that learned the lesson? What happened to... Understanding a commandment comes from the mind, Petey. Practicing it comes from the heart. Again, not saying that Osborne was right when he said that the contest was rigged, but at this point, I'm leaning towards him being not wrong. 
Don't bow down to golden things, fancy cars and shiny rings. We already got that song. Don't put any God before him. He's all in me. Okay, I'll admit, this is a good song found it kind of boring as a kid, but now that I'm older, I can really appreciate the music, the visuals, and of course, the message. And no amount of nitpicking will take away the fact that this is a pretty good Christian kids movie, one with lessons that even adults can learn from. Aw, oh, look at that, she's learning. Ah, oh, shut up. There's only one we should love and worship. One we don't need to see in order to believe. There's only one God who's the greatest. And people are so confused when I tell them that Christianity and Old Judaism is the only true religion. Five for Osborne and five for Petey. Now shut up, you ticker knockoff. So who wins all ten? Don't say I never gave you nothing. All right, the original top ten, the greatest collection ever, and it's mine. I won. No, you tied, and Petey just gave it to you out of pity. I think Osborne is going to need a bigger room. Number six, do not kill. Love one another is the greatest love song anyone can sing. Well, aren't we full of ourselves? I just now remembered that the song existed. Let's treat one another the way we treat ourselves. But only, of course, if you're in it to pick up chicks. Let's love one another the way we love ourselves. <laughs> if anything, I need to use something the complete opposite of me. It's too much. It's too much, Kramer. I can't take it. I can't take it. <laughs> you sound like my brother. I just now realized that this is the first time that Annie and Petey are mentioned as being siblings. Was that the real plot twist of the movie all along? Did all that really happen? Or were we dreaming? Or what? Yes, Osborne, it was all a dream, and that record bag just materialized in front of you out of thin air. Following the Love Light by the Kingdom Chunks. Hey, how'd I know that? It couldn't possibly be that you heard them sing it 832 times in the past hour, now could it? Also, why is it that this one diner has a portal to another world in its music thingy that also has a button for a song that the other dimensional beings sang in the shape of a heart? You can thank Marvelous Mo. And all the other Kingdom Chums did squat. 